Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I wanted to remind you of our Road to a Thousand Subscribers giveaway that we have going on our YouTube channel. If you subscribe and have a public profile, you'll be entered to win a free RX Smart Gear original jump rope. You'll get to pick the pattern of the handles, the color and weight of the cable, and you'll be getting one of the best selling, best performing jump ropes out there. Every time we hit a new century mark with the number of subscribers to our channel, we'll randomly select a new winner. And our friend Dave Newman is gonna throw in a little something extra for each winner. So a special thanks to our sponsor, RX Smart Gear, to Dave Newman for being such a great partner, and to you for being a loyal listener. Good luck, and I hope you are our next winner. We are so excited to now have Mobility Movement as a partner. Their holistic approach to recovery is second to none. This is not just a program that helps with your flexibility and mobility. It also assists with stress release and sleep, two key factors in overall recovery. The website gives you a plan for, for each week, saves your favorites, gives you sleep protocols, has a specific protocol for your first week joining, and then there are these new things called open snacks, which are super cool. Here you are given quick warm-ups and cool-down protocols for the open wads, featuring elite athletes Allison Scuds and Saxon Panchik. And who doesn't need recovery after those open workouts? The extensive library available to you is both vast and diverse. If you want to try Mobility Movement, go to mobilitymovement.com. That is mobilitymvmnt.com. And make sure you use our code CLYDESDALE20, all caps, to get 20% off your first six months. That's mobilitymovement.com. Mobilitymvmnt.com. Use code CLYDESDALE20 to get 20% off your first six months. I've been using this since the first of the year, and I am sleeping better than I have in so many years. And with all the back issues I've had over the last five years, this has given me so much relief, and I'm able to work out four to five times a week without any pain at all. So go to mobilitymovement.com. That's mobilitymvmnt.com, and use Clydesdale 20 to get 20% off your first six-month subscription. Hey everyone, welcome to the Clydesdale Fitness and Friends. My name is Scott Switzer. I am the Clydesdale. We love to do fitness, and this is my friend. This is Kristen Chandler. She's back for her second visit with us here on the podcast. So glad to have her. Hi, super happy to be back. So last time we talked about your life as an event coordinator with media and all that through Loud and Live Sports. We are not touching on that at all today. There's something that you have going on in your life that is super cool. I've been talking about this with all my friends and family because um, I think what you're doing is amazing. And you actually own an affiliate named Faru mm -hmm. in Tanzania, which is in East Africa. Yes. So can you tell the listeners how you came to be an affiliate owner of a CrossFit gym in Tanzania? Well, I am the affiliate owner because my name is on the contract with CrossFit, but I don't really see myself as owning anything. It is a, a not-for-profit organization that we work for. And the, the gym itself does not make any money at all. We don't charge any membership. There's no money changing hands anywhere along the line. Um, it is a, um, an affiliate that exists solely to support the health and fitness of the anti-poaching scouts that are associated with the Grumetti Fund, which is a not-for-profit organization that supports the ecosystem of the Serengeti. Um, so that's that's the gym itself. And um, how I got involved was I lived in Germany. Um, we lived there with the military in Stuttgart, Germany, and we got orders to move to Tanzania um, to go work for the embassy there. I have children um, and I was a, a full time mom doing a lot of um, consulting for CrossFit events and a part time coach at my local um, CrossFit affiliate in Germany um, as a kids coach. And, um, I was just, you know, on Instagram one day and I saw on CrossFit's page, I can't remember, I think it was CrossFit, um, like the main site Instagram. And I saw a video, a drone video of some guys doing some fitness in, in, uh, the jungle. Uh, it was just a drone shot of guys doing wall balls and box jumps. And I was like, what is this? And, uh, it's Tanzania. I knew I was moving to Tanzania. So I immediately got in touch with the person that, um, they had reposted the video from and just let him know that I'm coming to Tanzania and that I was interested in helping him however I could. Um, so we moved to Dar es Salaam, which is the capital down in um, Southern Tanzania and where um, the fund is located, which is just this large tract of land that is at the Northern border of the Serengeti. 
and then it, it borders on, on its northern border, um, a large population center. So it's just this little um, strip, and now it's actually expanding a little bit bigger um, that uh, exists as a protected private land. And it um, it serves as kind of a sieve to um, between the between the um, population center and the actual um, national park of the Serengeti. So it's this protected land that's well funded through private donors, um, and they have a large. They have a hundred more than a hundred um, anti poaching scouts. Um, and the guy that is in charge of the scouts, Wesley Gold, which is who I got in contact with, um, is familiar with CrossFit, does CrossFit himself, loves it. He's from Aberdeen and associated with CrossFit Aberdeen up there. And, um, and he started training the scouts with CrossFit. So I offered my help. Then when I moved down there, we just continued to stay in touch. Um, and I happened to be friends with some people at CrossFit affiliates through all of my, um, my travels and all of my association with um, the CrossFit games and regional events. I'd met um, the people that run affiliates and I wrote them and asked if they're interested in helping. And they were, um, and they gave us a nonprofit, not-for-profit um, affiliation, which is kind of a, an exception because we're not military, we're not a school, um, but it's kind of in the, in the middle there. Um, so they're very generous in their support of us and didn't make us pay for the affiliation. Um, and they've been very supportive of us since. So um, actually today, just signed my new affiliation. So this will be the fourth year that we're a CrossFit affiliate. And I'm really grateful for CrossFit's support of us. So the name Faru, where did that come from? So I think it's Faru, it's Swahili for Rhino. Um, and the Grumeti Fund, one of their goals, or their main goal is to protect the, e the ecosystem of the Serengeti and of the land that they're charged with. Um, and the rhino population in Tanzania was severely decimated over the past um, couple of decades because of poaching specifically, but also because of land use and um, the encroaching civilization that, that just continues to pull on the land that rhinos um, have been using, but most of it was because of poaching. So um, the Grumetti Fund at the time that we were starting this affiliate um, was bringing in 12 rhinos from all over the world, flying them in. Um, they had raised a bunch of money to um, to pay for that and to, to rehome some rhinos from some zoos into the Serengeti. And so um, another part of the Grumetti Fund is, is responsible for that. And the rangers specifically were, in, were um, responsible for their protection. And that was kind of like the sole focus of their lives for a couple of years. And they still are very focused on it. And the population in the rhino population in Tanzania is indeed now growing. And they've had a couple of babies, which is really fun to see. So that's the name, um, the namesake there. There are all, all manners of, um, of animals there. In fact, there's a video on, on the CrossFit Faru's um, Instagram page that shows the guys that were training. Um, one day they had to stop because a, a little herd of elephants walked through their training site. So they just had to stop back up and freeze and let the elephants pass and then continue their workout, which is really funny. So why is this personally important to you? Um, the environment and um, and animal protection has always been an interest of mine. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a veterinarian for a long time before I realized it had to do with a lot of sick animals and I'm not really good with blood. Um, and then I decided I want to be a zoologist. And, you know, those are just things that children love, but I've always been very interested in animals and I care deeply about it. Um, but as, as the, you know, um, environment has changed over the last um, 20 years, as I've grown up, um, it's just, you know, become more and more um, of, an important issue to, to draw attention to and to protect. It is um, an ecosystem worth protecting. It's, it's large, but it's getting smaller and it's changing significantly due to human actions. And it's, it's important to me that we maintain and, and preserve um, the landscape that you see drawn in, in The Lion King so that my kids can see it, your kids can know that it, it exists. We can have this going forward in the future and we're not significantly changing uh, the, the face of our planet without without trying to, to help. Which is my favorite Disney movie ever. <laughs> so um, so my understanding in my research is that the, the, the scouts were doing daily um, CrossFit.com workouts. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't a lot of coaching at that time and they were just kind of doing that. When you came, you gave them some actual coaching, correct? Mm -hmm. So Wesley Gold, the, um, the man that's in charge of the scouts, um, he, 
he does know CrossFit. He, he did CrossFit himself. And so he was coaching them and trying to, um, you know, just, just use the workouts that he, he sees and, and do what he could, but he'd never, he didn't have his level one. He'd not received any coaching training himself. Um, so I, you know, I offered to come up and visit and do, um, I stayed for eight days. Um, and I actually brought my, let me see how old he was 12 year old son with me as well. He's been doing CrossFit since he was four. So he's very familiar with, with all the movements. He'd heard me coach them a million times. Um, and we came up there and spent, um, some time doing some basic, like basically a foundations course is what I ran for the, um, they have a special operations group that lives on the base there, um, at the headquarters. So there was a group of, uh, 20 to 30 guys that changed as they go out to the field and come back. But for those, um, those scouts, plus, um, Alina, the one female scout, um, that, she has a title and she's going to kill me. I can't remember what she does, but she's in charge of all of the monitoring. She does, um, an amazing job of, of managing it's called earth ranger. It's this huge system of, um, of trackers and, um, they have helic a helicopter and a small airplane and all of this technology that they're using to, to keep track of the animals as well as the, um, the scouts, but she manages all of that tech. Um, but she's also very interested in CrossFit. So, and she speaks English very well. She's incredibly, um, she's educated, intelligent, and, uh, and used to, uh, English speakers. Um, whereas a lot of the other, um, scouts, uh, have not been exposed to, to English speakers as much. So she sort of acted like a translator for me. And there's a couple others that, that spoke English quite well, and they helped me translate, but a lot of it was tactile cues and demonstration, but just, just getting the scouts to move in healthy ways and understand the importance of good movement, um, so that they could do some of the more complex movements that they hadn't done before they had been doing basic powerlifting to make sure that they increase their strength, but without, you know, injuring themselves or anything, but we did everything from, from Olympic weightlifting to, to handstand pushups. And, um, there's a, there's, you know, there's just those few people that have that natural strength that I just showed them a muscle up and they're like, Oh yeah, I got this. <laughs> and you're like, cool. Thanks. Uh, but, um, so I did that for a week and gave them some intense training, um, intense being like, boring, but, uh, basic foundational knowledge. And then, um, I helped write their program for a while so that they had something to do every day. That wasn't just the dot com, which is totally fine, but it gave them a little bit more basic, um, assignments when the dot com workouts were a little bit too difficult or advanced or, um, not focused on the needs that they had. And they've actually partnered with a CrossFit gym out of the UK, correct? To get now, programming specific for their needs. Exactly. So, um, Wes is from Scotland. And so we had a, an existing relationship with Rob Lawson and, uh, Carl Stedman, who are CrossFit trainers, red shirts. I think they're CF level four. Um, Carl Stedman actually did my CF level two, um, training in Germany a few years ago. So it was fun to reconnect with him, but they both have had an interest in what the scouts are doing from the time that, uh, Wes moved down there. So that affiliation had been established. And then Wes actually did a sabbatical from his job and went up and got um, a master's degree in the UK this past year. I'm forgetting the timeline, but during COVID, he was up there for a year studying. Um, and so he solidified that, that partnership with, um, with Rob and with CrossFit Aberdeen. And Rob has a programming arm called Full the Pin Programming. And through their conversations, um, it was pretty clear that uh, we need someone to, to program regularly. I can program, but that's not who I am. Uh, and I, I get tired and uh, not good at, at being creative and, and being fresh with, with um, assessing what they need and how to, how to get the, the scouts to where, where they need to go. So it's super generous of Rob. They've just allowed, um, allowed CrossFit Faro to use their programming and then helped to tailor it to the equipment that we have and to the needs of the scouts. Well, speaking of equipment, like how hard has it been to get equipment into that area of Africa and what are the funding sources or streams like for that? So it's extremely difficult mostly, and I don't have a huge insight into this because this is Wes, Wes's thing. He manages all of this and he deals with government um, entities a ton in his own job um, with all of the things that they do with the Tanzanian government for the environment. Um, so he's, he's the one that's been dealing with all of it. When I got there in 2019, um, he had um, a trailer that had uh, probably 20 wall balls um, 
maybe 10 barbells, um, 10 boxes for jumping. And then they had a welder that made them some pull-up bars and, you know, some old tires that they'd found. So not a ton of equipment, but the problem um, in many countries, including in um, Central and Southern Africa, is just the, the customs and the import of the equipment. It can be donated, but I know there was a container of equipment that waited, I think, for two years in customs trying to get the clearance um, and not having to pay thousands and thousands of dollars worth of taxes to import it. Um, and those are just, you know, bureaucratic hurdles that exist. Everybody understands, um, but it's still very difficult. Um, Four Rangers is a nonprofit organization that exists to support wildlife rangers in all different ways. And they donated a large amount of equipment. Um, when did they do that? Um, I think in, two, yeah, this past year in 2021. And so they, um, the scouts were able to move from the little dirt patch that they had down to the airstrip where um, it's, it's the way to get to the park um, or to the, to the reserve, sorry. Um, and it's a, it's a, there's a hangar in there and they built, I think it has six stations of a, a pull-up rig um, and some more, some more equipment. So, oh, they also have a couple of rowers, a couple of concept two ergs. Um, so it's pretty difficult. Um, I, when I left, I moved, I was evacuated from Tanzania during the pandemic and I had a really, I had a very tall rig and um, an echo bike and a couple other things that we, um, were able to donate, actually, maybe not the echo bike, I don't want to misspeak, but several pieces of equipment that we were able to just leave with them. And that's easy because it was already, it was already there in country. And um, so that was, that was an easy way to increase their equipment, but otherwise it's pretty difficult, but there are organizations that have donated and there's a lot of individuals. So if anybody's listening and has uh, an interest in donating, there's um, a website with a easy credit card um, link where you can just donate simply. And as long as you write in the comments what it's for, it can go straight to that. But um, yeah, the equipment is definitely a challenge, but you know, with CrossFit, how, how incredibly varied we can make things with not that much equipment. Um, and the fact that the groups are smaller when they train, it's 10 to 20 people. It's pretty easy to cycle through um, the equipment and, and be creative and, and get a solid workout in with what they have. And we'll make sure I'll get that link from you and we'll put it in the description so people can click on that below um, when, when we uh, publish this. But um, so these guys, these scouts, right, they are doing a very dangerous job. Um, when I was reading what their day looks like, um, I was awestruck. Can you describe that a little bit? Um, they there are there are different different jobs within um, the Rangers. There's the special operations group, which is um, like a at the ready kind of task force that responds to any um, any reports of poachers in the area. And they're the, the senior Rangers there. They have experience um, They're I don't want to call them military, but they're military like because they have the similar training and ability. Um, and then there are there's a dog team that um, is trained to, uh, I actually, my son got to go out with the dog team one day and, and watch them track something from like five miles away. They went and dropped like a teddy bear or something, drove five miles away and then it tracked it. Um, so there's that team, but the majority, the big, the big portion of the scouts, they go out for six days at a time to these outposts throughout the reserve, live at those outposts. And then they walk, um, 12 miles a day, these little like clover leaves, um, around, around that post to, um, to just survey the area. They're looking for all the poacher traps that are set up. The most um, common poacher traps are these, um, it's wire from, I'm, I'm not sure the name of it. It's some kind of wire that is in the inside of a tire. So if you burn a tire and you take out the, the wire that's inside, it's very, very strong um, wire. And they make these, these like circle traps. And uh, these are what catches most of the wildlife. And so the poachers are looking for signs of poaching and for, for those traps and collecting them. And there's, I can send a picture of all of the traps that the, the rangers have found. So that's their daily life, but they wear a pack and they walk 12 miles a day. Um, so that's, that's kind of the fitness that we're training or the, the lifestyle that we're training them for with their fitness is to be ready for that. And then to also be ready at a moment's notice to react to a poacher that might not be looking to kill them, but might be if they're protecting their livelihood or protecting their, their booty, you know? Yeah. And not to mention that it's a dangerous job because of the animals themselves, right? You're out in the city. Oh yeah. I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and so I read that, that some of the scouts have been mauled um, by lions, um, mm-hmm. but lucky to be alive because, mm-hmm. because of what they learned and how they reacted in that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they truly have to be ready for anything. I mean, we, what is the CrossFit saying? You know, ready, what is it? For the unknown and the unknowable. Yeah. I've only listened to it for 12 years, but um, that's really the the unknown unknowable. It's somewhat known because they know the animals that are there, but they don't know where they are, when they'll be there, who who they're going to encounter. So it really is just being absolutely prepared for that and not being caught, um, not being able to react. Or when a herd of elephants is going to walk through your training facility. Right. Uh, I went for a couple of runs when I was there and um, I wasn't allowed to go by myself. They had someone um, go with me and a truck follow um, somewhat far behind because the biggest danger um, to just going out by yourself are, are buffalo. Um, they're, they are aggressive. They're, you don't see them because the grass is tr- quite tall, but they're huge and very, very dangerous. Um, so not just, you know, the, the Hollywood, um, lion maulings, but, but, uh, all kinds of dangers. Are they more like the water Buffalo, unlike they, the rich they, froning they, Buffalo? Oh no, no. They're, yeah, they're, they're water Buffalo. <laughs> not, yeah. not a, not a bison. Yeah. Well, these, these scouts have to be fit, right? They're walking 12 miles a day with a pack. Was the CrossFit really to ta- to teach the mental aspect of things and to gain some strength? Um, I think it definitely just has those benefits. Wes identified um, CrossFit as helping him with those things. Um, I wish he was here to to speak to it himself, so I'll try to do him justice. I've heard him talk about it a good amount. Um, but his experience was benefiting so much from from both sides of the CrossFit training, and you and I know how um, how much it helps you, um, be in a, in a good headspace, um, and also just be, um, be fit and, and ready for, for anything. I found with, um, with the scouts that physically they had a lot of strength available to them, but their movement patterns were just different. Um, they don't squat a lot. Um, they do just like a regular squat of sitting, but not squatting with weight and learning, teaching them how to, how to move their bodies and, and be able to gain some strength. They can also jump really, really high. Um, um, but they're really good runners and really good jumpers. And then being able to uh, add strength to that, um, just, you know, increases their physical preparedness for anything that they'll encounter. So what, what is the impact that, that you've seen you and Wesley have seen, um, in the scouts since they've been doing the CrossFit? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure if I can answer that because I haven't, I didn't know them before. Um, but I think that's a great question to follow up with him on. I'll ask. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to know. And then the poaching itself has, have you seen a reduction in the poaching now that you have the scouts, um, doing what they're doing? Um, that's also hard to pinpoint because the entire, um, the entire program of the anti-poaching department has grown in lots of ways. Uh, Wes has increased their, their tracking ability, all the technology that he's instituted, um, and, uh, the different ways that they have just grown in their ability to, um, to track poachers and to, um, to protect the animals has, it's been varied. So it'd be hard to say it's just one part of that, but surely they're, they're all related. Um, but I can say that the numbers, uh, show like significant, um, significant reduction. And what happens actually is that the, the Grumetti reserve, which I said was like a border between a population center and the Serengeti itself. The Serengeti is huge. It's massive and it's protected by the Rangers of the Tanzanian national Rangers. And unfortunately there's just not enough of them to protect that large of a land. Um, and, uh, the benefit of the private reserve is that it's better funded um, and that it has um, this technology and these um, focused rangers doing very specific um, work to to protect. But they get to it acts like a, a buffer. So the rain, the poachers have to move through the reserve to get to the Serengeti. So while the reserve is protected and all the animals that walk through the reserve, there's no fences, by the way, there's a border. There's no fences. The animals come in and out as, as they want. Um, but it it the poachers can't get through basically to, um, to the Serengeti because of, of the reserve in that area. So it acts, um, it doesn't just protect the land that they're entrusted with. It also protects a huge tract of land below and all of the animals that are, that are down there. So poaching definitely has been reduced. That's, that's what I was getting to. I, I probably asked the question incorrectly, but 
as an animal lover myself, I want to make sure that that there is an impact from all the efforts being done over there. Um, mm -hmm. Because I'll, I'll tell a short story. My my wife worked for a company. We went to a company picnic, and there was a barn on the on the land um, where this was. And I walked past the barn and I looked inside, and it was a trophy barn of all the th all the animals that this man had killed. And I'm not going to name him. I'm not going to do that on this show, but I wanted to throw up when I saw that, like it was, it was atrocious. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I was really interested in talking to you about this and what you guys were doing, because um, I know what that feeling gave me when I saw those trophies. I can't imagine being in the Serengeti and seeing this happen um, to these beautiful animals. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty shocking to see. Um, I have a very visual memory, so I try not to um, to look too often at at things that that will stick with me. But there's things that you can't unsee. The amount of um, of rhinos that were killed just for their horns and the elephants that are um, detusked is just is it, horrifying, and it's happening constantly. Um, the big export and the big main the main problem for poaching currently is um, African bushmeat. So it's not only the the horns that poachers are after, but the diaspora of African um, African citizens that moved outside of Africa and now have money in Europe and and um, in North America are looking for that taste of home. And bushmeat is that taste of home for many people. And unfortunately it is illegally um, obtained and just, I, Wes has told me the numbers, but there's some tons of, um, of bushmeat that moves through, you know, Charles de Gaulle airport in, in Paris, just in suitcases and things. But um, it's just sad to, to understand that it's not just the trophies that are, that are um, the problem, but it's, all of the animals and just just know, knowing the amount of animals that are available and then seeing their populations go down so much it's impossible for the entire ecosystem to not be fragilely impacted so it just it seems like a um, a really big deal and uh it is really great to have a tiny little part in in stopping that so my my last question is i read that there was an effort to try to get a level one seminar to be done in Africa. And this was late 2021. So I just wanted to get an update on that. And are you still efforting that or did it, did you make it happen? So this is actually the main thing that I wanted to talk about today. And this is what Wes asked me to talk about. So I'm really happy that you asked that question. It is our next thing. The guys are train training, they're doing their training. Um, they've got the program from, from Rob, thankfully. Um, but there's not anybody that has their, um, their level one that's there every, every single day. And that's helping and coaching and, and giving the CrossFit gym experience, which is like not personal training, but a, a personal coach that can really just be there and, and help, um, oversee and, and help people make progress. Um, so, it is, it, Wes is like, this is, is really important to him. And I think it's just um, the, a, bet, a really good idea to get um, some level one trainers down to Tanzania and to run a level one course there with some translators and get the, the scouts themselves to be trained coaches, to have their level one and to know what they're doing. And they're able to speak Swahili and, and really be the best coach that they can be for their scouts. Um, Wes has identified who um, he thinks would be or who the leaders in his group that would be um, good candidates for the course. And we'd actually been talking to CrossFit about this for years. Wes, I think, uh, had some communication with somebody from CrossFit before I came on um, and they were interested in it. And then I've gone back and forth with um, with some people from HQ that are interested in helping us make this happen. Um, the, the two coaches that I've mentioned that have supported us all along, Rob Lawson and Carl Stedman, um, are interested in doing it. We just need to get it funded. Um, so this is our next big thing. COVID really put um, a damper on that. We, we'd been focusing on it in 2020 and 2019, and then it just went full stop during the pandemic. Um, but the the next, the next step is, is getting it funded. We had a fundraiser at my local gym here, CrossFit Identity. Um, they do um, some community events throughout the year. And the manager there asked me um, if I had any ideas. And I was like, well, I've got this one, but it's personal. And he was like, no, it's perfect. Let's do it. So we had um, 
we had uh, actually Rob Lawson programmed a memorial wad for one of the scouts who was killed in the line of duty um, some years ago. And um, we he made he programmed it to be um, difficult and it had numbers that were significant that were the day that Kita Boca died um, and then the numbers of when when CrossFit Faru was affiliated. Um, and then just recently, Dave Castro picked up that that workout and did it a couple of days ago. So it, it showed back up again. But CrossFit Identity support um, for CrossFit Faru, Faru was really cool for me to see because these are people in Atlanta. They have no relation to anything in Tanzania, no reason to care. And they showed up and they donated. Um, and then we were able to send a big donation to CrossFit Faru um, to support this. Um, I don't have specific plans Um for more uh, fundraising, but we need to get some. Uh, I'm gonna get t-shirts made for sure um, to sell to people um, and then just wait and raise awareness that it is something, um, a cause to, to contribute to. And, and I do think the, the level one course would be really amazing for all of the scouts and for the program to be sustainable into the future when Wes isn't there, when I'm not as involved, whatever it is, we want, we want those scouts to have the knowledge and to continue growing CrossFit around the world and, and helping to, to spread the, um, the ability to sustain your own health and fitness. I personally would love a CrossFit Faru t-shirt. Perfect. <laughs> so, um, so if anybody's interested in, in donating some money to this cause, mm -hmm. um, send me a DM or, um, a message on my website. I will get with Kristen and I will get you connected so that you can, we can find a place for you to send that money. Awesome. It's a super easy link of just, um, donating by, by credit card. And then, like I said, just writing it in the comments, but it doesn't take more than any other donation online takes. It's just a few minutes and it's a not-for-profit organization um, that, that manages that. So we can make sure that all the funds are going, all of the funds are going to where, where you want to give them to. And again, we'll provide that link below so you can click on that and go right there. Kristen, uh, this is awesome. I want to give you time in case we miss something. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? That was a big one. Um, I want to just again, emphasize how, um, how important Wes, Wes is in all of this. He just drives, um, everything, um, about the scouts. He's, he's a visionary as far as anti-poaching he's in instituted, um, all of these changes for, for the, um, anti-poaching programs. And, um, he's, he's a leader in that area, but also, um, in their fitness and caring about the scouts holistically, which includes CrossFit. So he's just, uh, he works. I, I feel like I'm a hard worker. I work long days with my job and I work weekends and I just took my first vacation in two years. Um, but, uh, he works harder than I do and he cares tirelessly. Um, and it's, he's just, um, a, a huge supporter for the scouts and for, for um, the environment in Tanzania. And it's really cool um, to see our community come together. People in Scotland and Atlanta um, care about things that are you know, on the other side of the world. And it's just nice to, um, to be able to, to do the same thing all over the place and have a similar experience of that, that end of the wad feeling. You look over, same fist bumps, it's pretty cool. Yeah, this is awesome. I wanna thank you for coming on and telling us the story. I want to thank you for all that you do, along with Wesley and the group there in Tanzania. Um, and again, everything will be down below so that you can donate um, if you feel the need to do so. So thank you so much for joining us, Kristen. Thank you.